Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I can already tell this is gonna be a great one, so keep watching and I hope you enjoy it. felt inspired having written so many blog posts recently on various things, kind of small things that you can do to slowly change the world or at least change your world and the way you contribute to it. I thought I would do a YouTube video on my top tips to save the world. It seems way over the top to say you can save the world with these tips, but as you'll see, if we all did little things like this, then the world really would change. Call me naive, but I honestly think there's so much power in collective action, and I've been listening to loads of stuff about it recently, and I just thought I can't not contribute to the conversation. I am going to put in loads of references in this so that you guys can do a little bit of further research if you want to. Also, head over to my blog because I've got lots more information in there and also plenty of references and hyperlinks and all that kind of stuff so you can get people who are better at writing than me with more information than I have talking about the same things essentially. We all know there is a climate emergency whether you want to believe the science or not the climate doesn't really care about what we believe it's still happening and it's kind of scary and I know that people age sort of 16 to 30 well actually anyone under the age of 30 is probably way more on top of it than the rest of the population so I realize I'm probably preaching to the choir here but there are lots of things that we can do to mitigate those effects I'm just going to try and share some of those here and whether we do one of the following tips or all of the following tips the important thing is that we're doing something to make a difference um, and not just sticking our head in the sand and just watching the world go by. I would love to not believe that any of this stuff is true. I would love to think that it is all a hoax but unfortunately no matter whether I think that or not it's still going to happen so I'd rather be part of the change than part of the problem. The world that we live in is intrinsically problematic because of consumerism and the fact that we're all encouraged to have more 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 stuff and I realize that as someone who works in the influencer space I am part of that problem but hopefully I can also educate you guys on some ways of making it a little bit better so without further ado here we go Tip number one is to give up red meat. Maybe this is controversial. It's not controversial among scientists. Around half of UK based food related greenhouse gas emissions are due to the beef and dairy industries. Beef cows and lamb and other things like that are ruminants so what that means is they've got multiple stomachs and they chew the cud so they use bacteria to help them digest food because grass is notoriously hard to digest and that means that they can get the maximum amount of calories out of it essentially but what that also means is that they produce a lot of greenhouse gas emissions primarily methane and methane is incredibly warming for the earth. Producing a kilo of beef uses over five times the amount of land and 10 times the greenhouse gas emissions of an equivalent amount of other meat or vegetables. I'm not saying that you have to give up all meat, although of course ethically that might be beneficial. I'm just saying that red meat is the worst kind of meat that you can eat for the world and also for your health and also possibly ethically. I'm going to try not to go into the ethics of it and the health benefits of giving up meat are not really for this video. That's not what I'm trying to change. I'm trying to change the world, not your personal health or your conscience. Producing a single kilo of beef requires over 15 thousand litres of water compared to the 4,000 that it takes to produce a kilo of chicken or pulses, other versions of protein that you can get in your diet. As you might not know, contrary to what the kind of wellness space would like you to think, we already eat enough protein in our diets. We don't need to be throwing in loads of extra protein. Although chicken and pulses are much better for the environment than beef, we're already eating around two times the amount of protein in our diets than we actually need to live. That's just in the UK. And if we all cut down our meat and take to be the exact right amount of protein that would have a huge benefit to the world that we live in. Red meat is also bad for our health. The World Health Organization has linked it as a probable carcinogen and processed meats, processed red meats, are at the same level as tobacco which is because of its links to colorectal cancer and those links are pretty clear there. It's, it's probably, I know I said I wouldn't go into the health things, but it's probably not a beneficial thing for our, us to be eating. So if you are eating red meat, don't eat the processed ones and if you don't have to eat red meat, don't. If we all went vegan, the food-related emissions in the entire world would drop by 70%. 
70%. But having said that, if the entire US didn't eat meat or cheese for just one day a week, that would be the equivalent of taking 7.6 million cars off the road. So it's not necessarily about all of us going vegan, it's just about making small changes every day consistently. And if we all did that, we would have a huge impact. So I know that was a lot of facts in kind of a short space of time. I would encourage you to do a little bit of research, but essentially the numbers suggest giving up red meat is one of the best things we can do to save the planet. It will reduce greenhouse gas emissions and it will also help our health. That's tip number one. It had to be tip number one. I'm so sorry if you don't agree with me. Probably controversially among the vegan sphere, I do actually think it is possible to eat red meat sustainably. I just don't think that in the way that it's produced today in our farms where we're looking for as much volume as possible rather than as best quality as possible it's not a good thing to be contributing to. So yes, we can eat red meat sustainably, but not at the moment. We're not producing it in the sustainable way that we could be. And so I think for the sake of the planet, it's probably best that we take a step back and maybe save it for really special occasions if we have to eat it at all. So that's tip number one. My tip number two is to move your money to an ethical bank. So we all place so much emphasis on the way that we spend our money. If we're trying to be more ethical, we'll try and spend our money in better ways. But what we don't really think about is the way that our banks spend the money that we're not spending. So the money that we've saved that we think is obviously safely in a bank, banks have to spend that money because they're a business like any other and they invest in various industries. Basically, they're investing in industries, as I found out, that might not align with your personal values and when I found out that my bank basically had had kind of very little ethics, it's not one of the main banks, I basically just thought, I can't leave my money in here. When I'm spending, you know, the small proportion of my money that I actually spend in day-to-day -day life, I'm trying to spend it on ethical things and sustainable things and trying to help the world with the money that I spend. You know, put your money where your mouth is, that's what everyone said. And then I found out that the, the rest of my money, my savings is being invested into things like fossil fuels, it's being invested in fracking, tobacco, the, even the arms trade a lot of banks have been caught up with drug cartels and kind of have I think some of them have been actually linked to the deaths of various people because of their links to drug cartels it seems a little bit weird that we're all so blasé about the banks that we use when we're so on point with the money that we spend in our everyday life so I wrote an entire blog post on this basically led by an ethical consumer report that was released in 2018 that said that the UK's biggest banks they're like the big five that's Barclays, Lloyds, HSBC, RB and Santander are hindering our efforts to tackle climate change because they are investing and profiting off some of the world's most harmful industries primarily that is fossil the fossil fuel industry and, and banks like HSBC have actually increased their investment in the fossil fuel industry they are not divesting from fossil fuels and they're using your money to do that and no matter how little money you actually have in your bank I think this is a really good change to make because unlike the previous tip this isn't about giving something up this is kind of once you do this once you move to an ethical bank your money is there you don't actually have to do anything else they do the stuff with your money and that's why it's so important to move it I wrote a blog post about the best ethical banks that I found um, but some examples are Triodos, Co-op, Monzo, Handels Banking and uh, Charity Bank all of those have much more ethical credentials than the main five and actually to be honest any other big bank that you've probably heard of so I'd really recommend checking them out I've recently moved to Triodos Bank. I'm really happy with the service. I think it could be a little bit easier to use, but I think actually the more people who go over and switch to a bank like that, I think currently it's 750,000 in Europe, but the more people that switch over, the more user-friendly it's gonna become. If you're looking for a super user-friendly bank, Monzo is really good. They've got less focus on sustainability, but they're definitely an ethical bank and the CEO is like 30 years old, so he knows about the world's issues and he's actually interested in fixing them rather than contributing to them for the sake of earning more money. So go and check those ones out. I would love to hear if any of you have switched over to any of those banks or are starting to think a little bit more about the money that you have and how that's being invested. I think people stay well clear of the topic of money, but to be honest, this is one of the easiest things you can change. If you're a meat eater and you don't want to change that, or you can't change that for whatever reason, this is a really good way of actually starting to invest your money in ethical and sustainable projects worldwide. So that's what the banks do, like Triodos for example, funds 
projects that would otherwise have been using fossil fuels. So they will basically use sustainable technologies around the world. They fund community projects and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's awesome. And hopefully more banks will start to go down that route once they realize that more and more people are changing from the banks that are contributing to the worst things in the world. So that's my tip number two, super easy. And I would love to hear if any of you guys are giving that a go. Obviously I'll link the blog post below as well. Tip number three, is to stop buying clothes. Now, I say this a little bit tongue in cheek because I know that people do sometimes have to buy clothes. We can't all walk around naked, but nor do we need to. I think it is something like 30 billion pounds worth of clothes that have been unused are hanging in our wardrobes here in the UK. That is unbelievable. And and the, the information that I got for this one is from a rap report that was, so rap is a charity that focuses on sustainable fashion. And they released a report saying that the average lifespan of an item of clothing in the UK is 2.2 years. Now that includes items that we've had for our entire lives and is brought massively down by items that we buy for one party and then chuck out just like that straight away and that leads to a huge issue it's damaging for a number of reasons the first one is water pollution from dyes so the industry itself is quite polluting not only because of the greenhouse gases that it emits but also because of the dyes and chemicals that are needed to treat the clothes that end up in waterways. That can kill basically anything in the waterways. There are some horrible pictures of these beautiful places that have just turned purple just from the dyes or, or the other chemicals from factories that are producing fast fashion clothes. 20,000 litres of water are needed to produce one, just one kilo of cotton. If you remember me talking about beef, 15,000 litres of water is needed to produce one kilo of beef whereas 20,000 litres of water for one kilo of cotton. Of course, we're not consuming cotton every day, so uh, it's a little bit different, but that is a huge amount of water. And what that does is it, dred like, it dredges the water from local areas, causing drought in a lot of different places. In India, for example, the 85% of the population could have adequate water just from the water used in the cotton industry alone in that area. So it is a huge amount of water that's being used. And that means that places that would otherwise be able to grow food and provide water for people living in that area are no longer able to be used for that because they're no longer fit for purpose. The fashion industry also contributes to rainforest degradation and soil degradation. So rainforests are cut down to produce uh, the amount of clothes that we need and, and various amounts of the fashion industry comes directly from the rainforest themselves. And if it's not for that, it's just cut down to produce cotton, for example, or other fabrics used to make the clothes that we choose to wear. What can we do about this? Don't buy clothes. It's really actually quite easy to cut down our spending habits. I used to buy clothes all the time. I hate spending and I used to buy clothes all the time because I just thought like if I'm going to a new event then I need a new item of clothing. What I've done since then is build up a sort of core wardrobe that I wear year on year. I think most of my clothes are at least a year old. Most of them the others are like over two years old and I love the clothes and I wear them all the time. The way that you can do this is to try and buy clothes from sustainable fashion brands. They might be a little bit more expensive, but A, you're not contributing to the death of the world, so that's great. And B, these are clothes that you're gonna be wearing long into the future. So you want them to be a little bit better made. You want them to be sustainable and to look great and also just be core members of your wardrobe because that means that you're gonna be able to wear them for the future for a long time and rather than spending lots of five pounds here and there to buy lots and lots of different t-shirts just spend 50 quid on a really nice t-shirt and that means that that will last you for for much longer than 10 times the amount of time of each of those little t-shirts that are really actually not that nice if you do buy from fast fashion places make sure that you love that item that you're buying and that you're going to continue to wear it for a long period of time i know a lot of friends who are in the sort of sustainable fashion industries who do have items from zara h&m primark all that kind of stuff and i i do truly believe that they're all as bad as each other but they're wearing these items of clothing so many times i think the average wear per item of clothing is seven times in the UK. If you can continue to wear your clothes for years and years and years and your wardrobe isn't absolutely massive because that's the way that you forget about clothes that you have in it, you can actually be wearing the occasional fast fashion item without contributing 
a huge amount to all the problems that fast fashion causes because you're not buying new items all the time and that's the problem with fast fashion it's about getting the new season all the time buy clothes that you love buy from sustainable brands and then choose clothes from charity shops swap with friends and buy from depop where you can these clothes are quite often already used but you can go to charity shops and find new clothes like it's not unheard of and there's a lot of good stuff in there sure it takes a little bit longer but if you are looking for something new something specific then that's a really good way of doing it depop Pop is obviously a slightly easier way. You can just do it on your phone and you can find items of clothing from um, other people that whose style that you like. I do actually have Depop. I don't use it very often, but you can occasionally find some old stuff of mine on there. I actually try to give to friends or Depop before I actually take to charity. Certain fabrics are especially bad for the environment. So virgin cotton's really bad. Rayon, Modal and Viscose are also really bad because they contribute directly to deforestation. And then also one of the last problems of clothes is that they release microplastics so a lot of synthetic fibers which are less demanding on the environment initially then continue to release microfibers into um, our waterways when we wash them that's a serious issue with a lot of sports clothes for example high performance sports clothes are often made from synthetic fibers and whilst that may be better for the environment than virgin cotton initially what it also means is that you're releasing plastics into the environment which then fish eat then larger fish eat them and you end up with a tuna for example with a huge amount of plastic in its belly from our leggings. Thankfully, something's been made called a guppy bag, which collects the microfibers. It's not a perfect solution because you still have to chuck them into landfill, but it collects the microfibers and stops them from entering the waterways. And I would really recommend if you've got a huge amount of sports clothes like I do, that you should buy one of those and use them every time you wash your sports clothes um, and other synthetic fibers. That's a really good way of making less of an impact on the world and try and encourage your friends to do the same, saying like, you know, I've got a couple of items of clothing, do you want to swap some? It's really easy to have like an entire new wardrobe without actually contributing to fast fashion, I guess, deforestation. That's my tip number three. Not too difficult that one, I think. It takes a little bit of time to get into the mindset of not constantly buying new stuff. Oh yeah, and last bit on that is that if you do want new items of clothing, for example, if you've got a big party, a prom, a ball, or whatever, renting clothes is such a good, I mean, it's just an absolute game changer. There are loads of really good dress rental places. as Her Collective, The Endless Wardrobe, Wear the Walk, Rent the Runway. I mean, there are loads, and what they do is they have a lot of quite high-end dresses some of them are high street dresses but a lot of them are also high-end you can rent those for a set amount of money so say 35 quid for a high street one that you can rent for 10 days or maybe 80 quid if you want a proper designer one that you're going to rent for five days you can rent them and then give them back at the end and they wash them and then they reuse them for the next person it's kind of like airbnb but for dresses um and i think it's an amazing idea i've been doing this for maybe like six months now and it is an absolute game changer i'm not sponsored by any of these places by the way i just think it's like a really really good idea so go and check those out if you have like a lot of parties and you do genuinely feel like you need new items of clothing for each of those borrow from your friends or check out wardrobe rental because it is an absolute game changer tip number four unfortunately is another one about giving something up but i'm currently writing a blog post on the moment about how sustainable fishing is because i know that a lot of people eat fish but not meat as an effort to be more sustainable and i think that is not misguided i think that is a good thing to do and i was actually pescatarian for 18 years before i turned vegan so i know that it is sort of an interim stage for a lot of people and also the final stage for a lot more and i think that's still worth applauding however if you actually if you do care about ocean plastics giving up plastic straws is not the best thing that you can do not because plastic straws are good for the environment but because 46 percent of ocean plastic it was recently reported is actually from fishing the fishing industry 46 percent not very much of the ocean plastic is just straws most of it is from fishing a lot of which is drift nets which continue to catch fish and marine mammals and sharks and everything like that long after they've been released from the fishing boats that they were on so 380,000 sea mammals were killed last year because of ghost nets which is the name that these nets are given to they're called ghost nets because they're they're often cut off of fishing boats when they get entangled in something and they drift in the ocean basically collecting all the sea life that comes into contact with them a lot of which are sea mammals such as dolphins, whales and seals but you also get rare sharks which are critical for the ecosystem because they are apex predators also turtles, everything like this that are caught up in the nets they're not even being eaten, they're not being used for our own sort of goals they are just being caught and killed and 
left to die. So if you care about ocean plastic, one of the best things that you can do is to stop eating fish, or at least avoid fish caught in percent nets, which is basically a big net that's let out and goes under all the fish and then sort of tied up at the top so all the fish come out. It's like the classic one that you see. Um, I think it was in Finding Nemo, yeah. It's the one that gets like pulled out and, and it's like a big net filled with all of the fish in that area. And then also there are a bunch of other nets that are also super damaging to the environment. Anything that is a trawler, anything that trawls the bottom of the ocean is also really bad um, because quite often they get caught on corals. They destroy basically the entire seabed that they go along because they collect up everything in that area, including rare sea corals and all the fish, the bottom feeding fish, which is why they're used. If you would like to eat fish, avoid anything that's caught in nets. Long lines are also quite harmful, but if you can buy things that are line caught rather than person or, or net caught, you're doing a little bit better. I know a lot of people are gonna ask about fish farms, they are, best, they are, I think, better, but it does depend on the type of fish that you are farming because there are a lot of different fish that are either better in the wild or better farmed. So it is sort of on a case by case basis. I found that the easiest way to avoid making a kind of harmful impact was just to give up all fish. I would probably say that if you want to eat fish, try and eat it where it is caught, like near the sea where you know that it's just been caught. But other than that, if you care about ocean plastic and the plight of the animals in the sea, probably the best thing to do is to give up fish or at least drastically reduce your consumption of it and be mindful of what is sustainable and what's not sustainable. There is a good fish guide that updates you on how sustainable various fish are, whether they're farmed or wild caught and particular times of year so for example some are spawning in particular times of year and you don't want to catch them during then because then you might also kill all their babies so yeah have a look at that if you are trying to think about which fish are particularly sustainable and which ones are not sustainable go and have a look at the good fish guide um, but in general try and reduce your consumption of fish because it is killing the oceans tip number five lobby your government I think a lot of us are very happy with writing statuses on or writing things on Twitter, sharing things on Instagram and Facebook and that is really good. It's good for raising awareness and it's good for getting the message out there. When things go viral it reaches a huge number of people and also the chances are the government is likely to see it. However, the way that the government is much more likely to see things is if you actually write to them, actually doing something about the things that you are upset about, that you would like to see changed, is much more important than just liking a status and retweeting tweeting something on Twitter. I do actually think that our government is interested in hearing what we say, especially our own MPs, whether or not that's because they just want to stay popular or because they actually care about the plight of the world, I'm not really sure, but it is still important to write to them. So if you have something to say, write. There's a lot of information from Amnesty International about how you can do this. It's actually quite simple. If you're studying in one city and living in another city, you have a unique position where you can actually write to two different places at once and that's awesome so if you have something a particular policy that you're unhappy about a particular topic that you'd like them to focus more on it is possible to just write to them which is the great thing about the UK democracy you can make your opinions heard so check out um, Amnesty, they have a lot of information about how you can do that and the contacts for the people that you're trying to write to. This is gonna be a super short one, just write. Yeah, <laughs> that's tip number five. My tip number six is to offset your carbon emissions, especially from your flights. So commercial flying contributes to probably just over 2% of global carbon emissions. And whilst I don't think it's really useful to be shaming people about their flying habits, a lot of people have to fly for work, other people, I'm I mean, people deserve holidays. I don't think being environmentally friendly is about having zero fun at all. I do also think that if we have the capability of offsetting the carbon that we're releasing from things like flying, then we should. Not everyone in the world is privileged enough to be able to put aside a little bit of money to mitigate their impact on the environment. So for us in the West who are living more affluent lifestyles, I do think it's a really worthwhile thing to do. And as of this year, I started to offset all of the flights that I've been doing, which is too many for my liking, a lot of which were for work. And I've written an entire blog post on this, so this will be a relatively brief one. But do go and check out that blog post because it goes into a lot of detail about the different companies that you can use and how they all work and how they contribute to mitigate carbon emissions. A lot of the carbon offsetting companies finance renewable energies and sustainable projects around the world. So whilst they're not actually planting trees to absorb the carbon that you've emitted from flying from 
A to B. They are basically reducing the future carbon release from particular projects around the world. And I think that's actually much better because these projects are more likely to last for longer than just a single tree. Quite often they will work with places that otherwise would have used non-renewable power to do various projects. And instead they will finance the use of renewable power such as wind power, wave power and solar power, especially in communities that don't have a huge amount of money. So not only are you benefiting the environment but you're also benefiting local communities. A good thing to do is also to speak to your workplace and see if they can offset the carbon produced from from the workplace. I think workplaces are a lot more harmful to the environment than our own personal houses because they often leave lights on when no one's in there. They have to heat up uh, huge spaces in the winter and cool them down in the summer and they also often send people on long flights for one conference and then fly them back. Speak to your workplace and see if they can work with one of these companies to offset the carbon that they produce and a lot of these companies for example atmosphere i think they work with businesses really closely and they have an entire wing to basically deal with the carbon emissions from those businesses so they know what they're doing and it's a really good thing to do if you can get them to offset even just their flights or just their energy consumption or anything like that with one of these companies so go and check out that blog post it's got all the information for all the different companies and um, hopefully it'll be really useful to you guys okay so i think that's all the tips that I have for you guys. There are so many more things that you can do to benefit the environment and reduce your impact on the world. I think we start to get into a little bit more marginal gains, but things such as reducing food waste and taking public transport where possible are all really good ways of reducing your emissions. But I'm not going to go into all of them because otherwise this video is going to end up being this long. So I really hope you enjoyed it. I would love to hear what you guys are doing and, and the sorts of things that you focus on to reduce your impact on the world. I hope it wasn't too preachy because I am truly a believer that sounding preachy actually backfires and that trying to tell people that they have to do all or nothing is actually a really harmful message to put out there. I do think that whatever you're doing has a positive impact. I think we could all be doing more. I'm the first to say that living as an influencer is an incredibly wasteful lifestyle. You know, I get sent things in the post all the time and, and whilst I, I, when I know about it, I try and turn down way more things actually than I accept. I know that my lifestyle is probably not as good as it could be, so I'm still Still working to improve that as well so these points are just as much for me as they are for you um but yeah let me know how you get on with all of these things i'd love to know if you have any tips of your own and um, come and find me over on instagram and read my blog because it's got all the information in there and lots more links to things people who actually know what they're talking about compared to me and hopefully you can find more interesting information on that thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy this please do give it a big fat thumbs up share it with your friends and i will see you next time. Goodbye.